Right boys, welcome back. Hashtag Academy Season 3, Episode 5 today. Final 8, well done. You've done really well to get this far. We're down at the Footy Lab here in Bournemouth. Unbelievable facility here. And today is all about our, our challenge episode. So you're going to go through a load of different football related challenges, all testing different aspects of your football game. And half of you, four of you, will go through to the next episode. So we're going to lose half the group today. It's going to be tough. However, one of you can earn your spot straight through to the next episode by winning today's challenges. Points available in every single one. If you get the most points at the end, you're straight through to the final four. So best of luck, enjoy, and let's go do some challenges. Okay, first up, it's the passing challenge. It takes place in a six meter circle, and it's pretty simple. You've got 60 seconds to get as many points as you can by passing to the right panels. Green lights are worth three points, yellow, one point, but hit a red light and you lose a point. Plenty of professionals have had a go at this. The question is, could our boys match Ronaldo and Co? The key to this is staying in the middle as much as possible. Check your shoulders, keep your head up. You need to spot your next green pass as early as you can and keep the ball on the deck. Byron Humbles here rescued himself pretty well from a dodgy bounce off the wall and eventually picked up 105 points, including four penalty reds. Matt Waldridge did a little better, a pretty solid 108 for him, including three reds. Rowan Dawling was a little bit tentative on his attempts, maybe in that careful defensive mindset, didn't want to give the ball away. So he went around the circle a little bit slower than some of the other guys. And despite a decent ball roll in the middle, he ended up with a lower down 103 points. Yoni had a bit of a shaky start, to be honest. Going for a risky strategy of first-time passes early on, he came unstuck. If you don't keep the ball down, this passing challenge will punish you. He ended up on 100 points, slightly lower down the leaderboard. Joel Older had a decent start, but lost his way a little bit in the middle. Again, if you miss your control, you're going to struggle. He hit six reds, which knocked him back down to the bottom of the pile with 98. Although, in fairness, he was playing with an injury on the day. Reese got himself in a pretty good rhythm and put himself right into contention with a very decent 114 points, which is better than some pros. Jake Lindsay found it a little bit harder to get himself into that rhythm, traveling around the circle a bit too much, but he recovered well with a loose ball. And what was that? Yes, that was an outrageous backhill attempt towards the end there, which is very risky when you can't see where the target is. But I applaud the bravery from Jake. 116 points for him. But it was Liam Mulligan who ended up as the top of this challenge. He recovered incredibly well from a nasty kick off the wall and then used both his feet to bag a table topping 121 points. And yes, that is more than David Beckham. Well done, Liam Mulligan. So to the leaderboard after round one, we're giving 20 points for a win on every challenge, 15 points for second, 10 for third, seven points for fourth, five points for fifth, three points if you come sixth, one point if you come seventh, and zero points if you finish bottom, which means Liam is on top after challenge one ahead of Jake and Reese. Yoni and Joel are down there at the bottom with one and zero points respectively, but there's plenty more to play for. Mulligan, you beat David Beckham with that one. What's going on? Yeah, beat, beat a few of them on that. And it did come up here. And I still had to chest it down. A couple of little boys saying I should have picked it up. But I'm not sure about that. Have to, can't use your hands, can't use your hands. Boys done good on that one. Next up, who's got the quickest feet? We're putting the guys head to head on this one and they've got 60 seconds to react to as many lights as possible. You don't need to be hitting the lights, you just need to break the beam. Highest number of lights, bags, 20 points. It's as simple as that. This one's obviously all about reflexes and fast feet. To win, you've got to stay on your toes, move efficiently, keep your head up and use your peripheral vision to watch out for the lights when they pop up. This one was always going to be a bit tougher for the bigger guys. You can see that here with Byron up against Jake. Byron struggled a little bit, but ended up with 43. Jake going a fair few better on 51. Another battle of defense versus attack. But Rowan came out on top against Joel in this one, despite missing a few lights on the way to a total of 51, with Joel behind on 45. Yoni and Reese were up next, and Yoni's slow start to the day continued. He didn't keep his head up enough and was slower off the mark. Reese, on the other hand, or the other foot, I should say, was darting across the beams like a young Michael Flatley. Reese finished with a double decent 57. Last up, current leader Liam Mulligan head to head against Matt Waldridge. You fancy him in this given how he did in the first challenge, but Liam hesitated a little bit on a few lights whilst uh, Matt absolutely nailed it. A huge victory for Waldridge, 59 to 46, and he bags the W on challenge number two. 
So that's a big 20 points for Matt Waldridge on that challenge. Another solid round for Reese, uh, with Rowan and Jake sharing third place. Which means that overall, Waldridge is now our leader after round two, ahead of Liam and Reese, with Yoni perhaps a surprise at the bottom right now. Remember, nobody's going to be booted out because of their scores, but the winner will go straight through to the next episode, with the fate of the others being left to Devs and Joe. Waldridge with the quick feet. How'd you do it? Surprised myself a bit. I don't really know how I've done it, because obviously there's a lot more technical players, quicker players, but defender, I'll take it. More points on the board for the end, so hoping it does well for me. Okay, next up, it's time to test our players' speed. Joel Older up first. Three different challenges. You've got a flat 20-meter sprint. Joel Older got 2.9 seconds for that one. Then a 20-meter uphill sprint. Joel matched his 2.9 second score over the same distance, but uphill, which is impressive. And then we finish with this dribbling course, uh, and we add the three scores together to make one time. That's 10 seconds on the third uh, dribble there for Joel, which creates a total of 15.8 seconds. So that's Joel Older's score. Next up is Matt Waldridge. So can he beat 2.9 seconds on the 20 meter sprint? Slightly slower with a 3.1. On the uphill, 3.4. So a little bit behind Joel on the speed. And then on the dribbling, Joel got 10 seconds for this one. Matt's looking like he's doing a decent speed on this, I would say. Yeah, 9.8, slightly quicker. In total though, that is 16.3 seconds for Matt Waldridge. Okay, Reese Antoine de Costa up next. 2.9 is the quickest so far on the 20 meter flat sprint. And Reese has got 2.9 as well. He's matched it. He's ended up with 3.3 on the uphill sprint. And what can he do on the dribble? This is looking good so far. 9.8 was the quickest so far on this dribble course with Matt Waldridge. And he's matched it there. Slightly quicker than, than Matt overall though, with 16 seconds. Joel Older still in the lead though. Liam Mulligan, what can you do, my son? I wouldn't say that speed would necessarily be a strong point, although it's a decent 3.1 there. 3.4 on the uphill. So not the quickest, although he's looking very quick on this dribble. He's doing it almost at a sprint pace here, which is what we like to see. Okay, that's really quick. 8.8 is a second quicker than anyone else so far on the dribble, which gives him an overall score of 15.3, which is half a second quicker than anyone else. Next up is Rowan Dawling. Wouldn't think he'd be the quickest, but he's managed to get three seconds on this one, which is quicker than both Liam and Matt Waldridge. He's got a 3.6 on the uphill, so slightly slower there. How can he do on the dribble, though? Good footwork for a big man here. Okay, he's finished with 9.7, which again is the second fastest so far on the dribble, and that gives him 16.3 total, which puts him in uh, joint last at the moment. Okay, Jake Lindsay up next. As a winger, you'd like to think pace would be an important attribute for him. What's he got on the 20-meter sprint? Okay, 2.9, joint fastest so far. He's got 3.2 on the uphill sprint, and now it's just the dribbling part, which I'd say is a decent part of, of Jake's game here. And he's making some decent progress. He's got a 9.5, which is the second quickest so far. Overall, that gives him 15.6, and he puts him in second place at the minute. Yoni up next, though. What can he do here on the sprint? Got some decent momentum there. Three seconds. Okay, that's good. On the uphill sprint, 3.5. If he can have a good dribble here, he could put himself in the mix. He's looking like he's moving very smoothly here. 8.8 .8 is the fastest so far. He's matched it. Okay, same as Liam. And overall, that gives him a 15.3 second total, which is exactly the same as Liam Mulligan. So they're joint top at the moment. Okay, next up, and finally, it's going to be Byron Humbles. You wouldn't expect him to win this one. I think he's the heaviest as a big defender, but he has got a 3.1 on the 20-meter sprint, 3.5 on the uphill sprint, and now for the dribble, what can he do here? So far, 10 is the slowest, and 8.8 .8 is the fastest, and he's got 9.8, so not the slowest on that one. Total speed, though, of 16.4, which makes him slightly slower than Matt Waldridge in last place. So if we look at the speed leaderboard there, you can see Mulligan and Vukad sharing the points, 17 and a half points each as they finish joint top. Joel Older was actually really quick over the sprint and the heel. It was just the dribble that let him down. So Mulligan quite far ahead at the moment with 42 and a half points. Lindsay in second with 33 and a half. Da Costa just behind on 30. Waldridge on 28 and a half. Bit of a gap there between Waldridge and Vukadj, who's sitting with 18.5. But that 17.5 points he's just picked up could be massive for him because he only had one point after the first two challenges. Dawling on 13 points, Joel Older on 10, and Byron Humbles on six.
Devs, the challenges are a lot different this time around. Yeah, they're more football related. I think you know, in the past we've um, we've had to kind of put our own things together, and it's we've, it's, been, it's been great. But this 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 facility here, the Footy Lab, is fantastic, um, and the guys are getting to do things that are football specific. So we can see them in in that environment. It's it's, um, it's testing their brains as well as their as their feet. So yes, yeah, really really interesting. Joe, the ex-pro, what do you make of these challenges? I think they're really good and from my perspective where I do a lot of the coaching with them, seeing how they handle certain things, is, it's been really sort of insightful so far so it's been a good day. And you've got some tough decisions to make later? Devs has got some really tough decisions, yeah. I'd put them all through, I'd give them all the winner's medal. Um, Devs is the evil person around here, we all know that so I'll leave it to him. Two challenges left then, and first we're back on another passing challenge. We're calling it the press. It's an eight metre zone this time, you get 60 seconds, and the aim is to pass to the blue lights, but there's the added complication of the end zones, which you even need to dribble to or pass through, depending on what the lights tell you to do. And this time, if you make a mistake, you can't crack on without pressing both panels, which is simulating you having to get the ball back after losing it, and that really slows you down. This one tests your vision, your positioning, your accuracy, and your speed of passing. You're given yellow lights to indicate where your next pass is, so if you're more aware, you can position yourself better. Mistakes in this one are gonna cost you, and that's what happened with Jake, Joel, and Byron. Joel struggled in the first passing challenge, and it was the same here. He is carrying an injury, though, I have to make that clear. Uh, four mistakes slowed him right down, putting him in last place. Jake only did one better. A few heavy touches let him down, and then he missed the press panel, which slowed him down even more. And that could be difficult for him to come back from in terms of getting immunity. Byron also had four mistakes to deal with and came third bottom, one above Jake. Matt Waldridge only made two errors but had problems with one of his presses and then had to deal with a dodgy rebound off the board. So he ended up with another mid-table finish. Current leader Liam won the first passing challenge but was a little bit reckless at times with this one. Also he made two errors but was much faster overall than Matt, ending with a score of 35. Reese Antoine de Costa went one better, bagging third place, same as he did in the first passing challenge. He's looking pretty consistent. The surprise package of this challenge, though, was Rowan Dawling, who put on his best performance of the day. Very sure and very steady. He got second place with 41 points, a full five ahead of Reese. But head and shoulders above everyone else in the press challenge was Yoni, who's making a late push for immunity. He struggled in the first passing challenge, but redeemed himself here thanks to his vision, a solid rhythm and a clean and fast round, a full seven points clear of Rowan. So 20 points for Yoni on that one. Joel picking up a zero. Jake only getting the one. And let's see how that affects things on the leaderboard with one challenge remaining. Liam Mulligan is still at the top, but with 20 points still to play for, Anyone all the way down to Matt Waldridge could still make a last gasp bid for immunity. Could it be Liam? Could it be Reese? Will it be Yoni, Jake, or will it be Matt? Let's find out. Yoni, 48, that's a high score. Yeah, not too bad. I needed to get some points on the board after the last passing one. I was a bit disappointed with that one, but I felt like I'd done well on that one, yeah. Are you confident going into the next ones now? Yeah, a lot more confident now. Uh, I started a little bit shaky, but that's a bit of a confidence boost. Finished top on that one, so yeah, hopefully I can finish top on the rest as well. This is it then, the final challenge of the day with all still to play for. It's a circuit designed to test your passing, your dribbling, and of course, your shooting skills. You've got to hit the flashing panels, pass through the gate, and then take a shot at the wall, aiming for the highest score possible. So ideally, you're after top bins. And we're scoring this one by taking the overall time in terms of seconds that it takes to complete the challenge, but then taking away whatever score you get from the shooting. So for example, if you score 20 on the shooting, we'll take 20 seconds off your time. Lowest score wins. Okay, up first on this dynamic shooting challenge is going to be Rowan Dawling, who gets his pass off. Has to hit the uh, the bouncer that's lit there, go back through these dribble posts. Again, with the bounce off, although he's missed his pass, which is going to slow him down. Now he shoots. That'll be two points for him there if he hits it inside that uh, green square. Needs to be a bit better on these next two attempts. This time starts off on the right, gets his pass off. Back through the cones, as has been Dawling's style today. He's taking things quite slow and methodical, but he's missed his pass there again. He's got to go and get the ball. Again, this is going to slow him down. What he needs now is some decent shots to get those points back you know, to take some seconds off his time. That's the bottom right corner, seven pointer. That's not too bad. He's got one attempt left, and now the lights light up in a random order, so we didn't know what way 
He was going to have to pass it. There's his second pass. Now he needs a decent finish. Oh, I mean, that's decent. That's a 10 out of 10. Top bins. 45.2 seconds in total. He gets 19 points off his score. The 26.2 is the total score set by Rowan there. Matt Waldridge up next. First pass is key. Gets it a bounce back. It's not just about hitting that pass. It's about putting the right amount of pace on the pass. So it comes back to you just like that. Set himself perfectly. Six points on the shot. So that's six seconds that will come off his time. Into the second one now. Gets the ball bounced. You want to try and do this at good speed, you know. That's a bounce back. Bang. Oh, that's a lovely strike from the fullback slash centre mid slash centre back slash wherever you need him. He gets uh, eight seconds off his time there. And this is the final run through for Matt Waldridge now. Going through the second pass. Comes back for the rebound. To five. Not bad at all for Matt Waldridge. 35.4 seconds. 19 points just like Rowan on the shooting. 16.4 seconds overall is his time. It's 10 seconds quicker than Rowan. Jake Lindsay now. You'd like to think this is the sort of challenge that would suit Jake. Pass is going to come back. Goes back through the post. Second pass is good. Shot. Oh, I mean, that's unreal from Jake Lindsay with the curling effort. 10 out of 10 on that shot. It's a very good start. Oh, that's not what you want to see, though. His left-footed pass has missed the target. Slowed him down a little bit. Can he make up that time here? Left-footed shot. Not bad. It's a six. It's decent. He goes again here. Get these passes off. You've got to try and be quick, but you've got to be accurate as well. Second pass, and then the shot. Bosh. Okay. Not too bad from Lindsay. 34.7 is the quickest anyone's done the circuit so far, but he only gets 17 points on the shooting, which means 17 seconds come off. 17.7 seconds puts him in second place currently. Yoni Vukaj now. Can he end on a high? Gets his first pass off. Back through the gate. Second pass. Nice. Shot. Oh, it's wide. He's dragged it. It did actually hit the seven, but it was off a rebound off the wall, so he won't count that one. That's zero points on that shot. What can Yoni do here? Back through the posts. Gets his pass off. So he'll come off a bit of an angle. He tries a Rabona effort, which nearly landed on five, but it's actually zero points from the first two shots for Yoni right now. Could do with the recovery here. That pass has gone off a bit of an angle, although I think the ball was in the way a little bit. Let's try again here, Yoni. Oh, uh, you know what? I think those first two shots have just put him off. He's, uh, he's form a little bit and he's missed the pass. Now he just needs to finish with one more shot, which he's put over. So it's not a great round there for Yoni. He took 40.6 seconds, slightly quicker than Rowan, but no points on the shooting has hurt him. Reese Antoine de Costa. What can he do? First pass, bounces back to him. Back and wants to get it back. You know, you want to get it back on your right foot or whatever foot you are. This is all right footers going first because we changed the course for left footers. Oh, he's dragged that shot. I mean, we know keeper saves that all day. That's just two points for that shot. Reese goes again here. Second attempt. And then has he set himself well for the shot? No, the pass has actually ricocheted off of the rebounder. And he's got to go back and do it again. Hopefully he can get a good shot off here. There it is. That's not bad at all, to be fair. It's an eight out of ten. Decent strike. How much would you love to have one of these in your garden, by the way? Unbelievable setup here at the footy lab. I love it. Reese. Final shot here. Okay, that's a five. 15 points from the shooting, so 15 seconds off his 43.5 second time. 28.5 overall, which actually puts him second last at the moment. Right, we've reset now for left footers, and Byron Humbles is the first left footer to go up, and he's missed his pass. As a left footer, we start them on the other side of the, uh, of the course, so they've got an easier first pass, but it hasn't worked out for Byron here. What's his shot going to do here? Right foot shot. Two points. At least he's on target. It's something. Two seconds off his time. Second attempt here for Byron. Remember, he's a defender, so you wouldn't expect him necessarily to excel on this. Defenders in general, a little bit harder for them today, I'd say. That's why we're not eliminating anyone based on their performances in this episode alone. That was a better shot, though, that time from Byron. Now coming into the final pass and the final shot. What can he do here? Bounces back to him. We have given him two points, even though it didn't light up for that because it was on target. So 11 points from the shooting means that Byron ends up with 26.6 seconds. Joel Older, the next left footer up, and he could really use a good score on this one just to get himself up the leaderboard, although he has been carrying an injury, as we mentioned. Gets his first pass off, but hits the post there. That's going to slow him down, and the pass has come back at a horrible angle. He recovers it well with a weak foot shot, though, to get a 7 out of 10 there. Fair play, Joel. Back in again now. 
It's all about making sure that ball comes back to you at the angle you want it to, or else it can really slow you down here. That's a nice pass. Shame about the shot. It's gone very high. Joel's got one attempt left now. He doesn't know what, what rebound is going to light up first. It's a random order on the third pass. He gets that one off. One more pass here. And then the shot straight down the middle. Okay, so that means eight points for the shooting. He ends up with 25.6 seconds overall. Liam Mulligan is up last. Now, he's in pole position to win this thing. Oh, it's a terrible start, though, for Liam, who's put his pass wide. I think I'm right in saying if he just gets maybe maybe fifth or better on this challenge, he will win overall and win immunity. So he needs to recover from that first pass. Although the right foot shot is a snatched effort. Okay, not the best start, but still room to recover it if he gets some big shots off here. First pass comes back. Back through the post. That's it. Here we go. Left foot shot. Liam Mulligan. It's a five-pointer. Okay, it's still available for Liam. If he has a good score here, I think he will get immunity. That ball's got stuck a little bit, but it's still in play. Back through the posts. Rebound. Right foot shot is a two-pointer. That could hurt him. 40.7 seconds it took him. And he got seven points off for the shooting. So what does that mean? Well, as you can see... Waldridge has won the challenge. Very impressive 16.4 seconds when you take off the points he got from the shooting. 20 points for him in that round. Mulligan's the important one to look at, though. Second last on that. Just one point because he got a score of 33.7. Only Yoni was slower. And that might have cost Liam immunity. And a very impressive 19 points on the shooting from defender Rowan Dawling. And when we look at the overall leaderboard, you can see that score has cost Mulligan immunity. Waldridge takes it. 53.5 points is his final score. Mulligan just 50.5. If he'd got a couple places higher on the shooting, he would be immune. Lindsay just behind a 49.5. It was really between those three in the end. Da Costa, decent effort on 43. Vukaj has done really well, if you think about it, to end up with 38.5. When you consider he got zero points for two challenges and one point for another. But he won two other challenges. Rowan Dawling should be really proud of his 35 points for a big defender. I think that's a, a solid score. Joel Older probably won't be happy with 20 points. Although, as I've mentioned, he wasn't at full fitness. And Byron Humbles, as another big defender, is propping up the rest of the leaderboard in final position with 14 points. Right, lads. It is the end of a long day. Thank you all for your efforts today. It's been fantastic. Great opportunity to see a little bit more through these drills. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is announce who's won the immunity through collecting the most points today. It was very tight. It did come down to this last challenge. Uh, and the man who managed to win this challenge and get 20 points has actually climbed to top place. And that is Matthew Aldridge. Congratulations. You've got immunity, so you're through to the next episode. Take a step forward, Matt. Well done. Very consistent throughout the day. That, that's why you're there. So well done. You're one of the four that's going to go through. Uh, as you know, after that, Devs, Joe, myself, we had a little chat and it was a difficult one, really difficult. The hardest so far in the process because it's just so hard to tell between you boys. Um, and I also want to reiterate that it is a it's a game of opinions, boys. It's not a right or wrong at this point. It's just what we have decided today based on not just today, but all the other episodes as well. So please don't be disheartened. In fact, if you don't make it through, give yourself a big pat on the back for, for doing so well and getting that invite as well, which means we'd love to give you another go you know, at the club. It's just the contract ultimately that is going to go to one player here, okay? So uh, the next three guys I'd like to step forward who are going to be joining Matt in the interview process are Jake Lindsay. Well done, Jake. Okay, the next player we'd like to see in the final four is Yoni Vukaj. Well done, Yoni. Okay, really difficult as to who got the fourth spot, guys. Commiserations for those of you who haven't made it. The fourth person we'd like to step forward is Reese Antoine de Costa. Well done, Reese. Once again, guys, uh, to you four, we look forward to, to talking to you a bit more in the next episode and getting to know you better. To the four that haven't made it, commiserations. You've honestly done so well to get this far, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Well done, well done. Matthew, you came out on top today. I don't really know how because there's a lot of ballers out there, but the last drill done me very well because I was struggling through mid mid pack and all that, but the last one done me well. And how do you feel like you're going to do in the interviews? The interviews, 
I don't really know what they're going to chat about, but got to be honest, can't lie. It will come out and just see what happens from there. Jack Lindsay, you're through to the next round. How's it feel? Brilliant, buzzing. I thought everyone was brilliant today. Could have gone either way, but it came down to the last one where I could actually show what I can do. And yeah, it went well, I'm happy. I think throughout the process, I've done quite well and I've shown, shown my, my ability. And I think I've done well to earn my place. Um, it was tough competition today, don't get me wrong. So I'm very happy to have got through. Obviously over the moon, happy. Um, yeah, I, I didn't think I'll get immunity because of the last couple of drills, couple of sprints and the um, dribbling, which is why I lost um, the time. But yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that I'm through. Dev's happy with the decision today? Yeah. Um, happy but also disappointed because it's been in in the two occasions I've been part of this process obviously including the, the last time around this is today has been the biggest and toughest decision we've had to make I think the longest discussions we've had to have um, I'm delighted for the four that have gone through but I'm also equally disappointed for the guys we've had to say no to um, today so uh, you know the likes of Liam Mulligan's had an excellent day with the challenges. Um, was close to actually getting immunity, um, and um, but we've kind of looked at the whole process today. wasn't you know, it, which is it was a deliberate thing. We didn't want today to be something that cost someone in terms of the score. So we we only had the winner getting immunity. Nobody went as a result of their of their results, but it was. Um, it was yeah, it was really really tough. Byron did really well, I think, considering he's been out injured as well for a long time, and the, probably a little bit of that rustiness showed um, showed how long he's, he's been out. But you know, the guys we, we've been inviting them back in for pre-season. That's how strong this group's been, and, and hopefully they'll take up that off. The whole decision making's been really difficult. This is my first time doing it, and I think you know someone like Joe. He probably hasn't had his best day today, but throughout the process, he's been he's been excellent. And the the magic 15 minutes he had, where he got his hat trick, it probably set a standard that he couldn't keep keep up to. But you know, it, it was give everyone food for thought, and I think he's done really well for it. And then you know, Rowan Dolan, I've I've got to know him a little bit more today because I was doing the first team last week. Devs. Devs took the uh, academy boys, got to know him a bit better. So, you know, having a brief chat with him today, I, I, I really like him. I like his personality. I think he's got better as the, the process has gone on. And I think he's going to be a real good uh, centre, central defender going forward. And hopefully he'll take us up on the offer and it'll be with us. Well, guys, that is the end of this episode. What an episode it's been. Really enjoyed it, apart from that end bit, of course, because... It's just so hard at this point because you know the guys are so close to winning that contract and you have to take it away from them. But by taking it away from some, we're giving you know, another four guys another opportunity to prove themselves in the interview episode, which is going to be up next. So I'm really looking forward to drilling a little bit more into their history, their football CV, you know, what their intentions are with this process. It's going to be really important. So in the interview episode, we're going to go down from four to two and find out our finalists. But if you've enjoyed this challenge episode, please drop a like on the video, subscribe for more. Anything you can do to support the club, we of course really appreciate. And we'll see you next time when we're not only going to do the interviews, we're also going to pick up the women's side of things as well. So look forward to seeing you then. Until next time, don't forget to hashtag it.